it was ecclesial, it was sacramental, and it was theological. Duncan's practical theology was rooted in the life of the church, in a church which spanned the faith not of commission of the World Council of Churches and being an elder in the local congregation. His practical theology was rooted in worship, about which he wrote quite extensively, and indeed in a sacramental form of worship, which was perhaps peculiar to some Presbyterians at least. And his theology, his practical theology, was theological. His continuing engagement with the theology of Karl Barth, although I don't think he would claim to be a Barton, a Barton, but if you look at the index of any of his books, you'll find more references to Barth than you'll find to any other theologian, which says something. Combined with that was his later attachment to theological fragments. But, he added, because he bought into any postmodernist scenario, oh no, he would never do that. But again, I use his words, there is no other way forward than presenting or offering fragments which may be seen as relevant and true, illuminating and helpful for just practice. That's my starting point. Before I saw the three papers today, I thought I might be able to classify them either as development or destruction. Now, I see two of the papers today as being one of development, of taking practical theology as it was reformed by Duncan and moving it forward to a, to a new maturity. I think what we've heard today from Lee and Heather is something about the integrity of practical theology as its own discipline, certainly a, dialogue in, a, a discipline in dialogue with other disciplines, but nevertheless not the junior partner in anything else. When I read Jeremy's summary of his paper, I wondered if this was going to be disjunction. Because Jeremy seems to want to move practical theology from qualitative to quantitative. Now this rang bells for me. Because my own PhD was essentially quantitative. So Jeremy, been there, done that, and got the PhD. <laughs> At that point in the 1960s, Alistair Campbell was teaching practical theory, was teaching pastoral care and counselling, and three newly appointed hospital chaplains were taking students on placement. But we didn't know what was happening to the students. So my second supervisor was Henry Walton, who was professor of psychiatry and an expert in medical education, so we adopted some of his quantitative methods. To cut a long story short, I analyzed the responses of the students to pastoral conversations. It was all very quantitative. The bottom line was that as a result of the course, they were asking less questions and saying, mm-hmm, much more frequently. <laughs> In other words, they were moving from asking questions to a kind of minimum response. Not only that, it was statistically significant. So then I had devised a scientific practical theology. The trouble is, we didn't really know what was happening to the students. 
with masses of students, we were analyzing masses of data, but the inner story was never evident of what was going on. Now, what I think Jeremy is advocating is a move back from qualitative data to quantitative data. And I suppose what I want to say is yes, but. When you're talking about this as a contribution to practical theology, what do you mean by theology? And when you are, I mean, I think looking back now, it was a very naive kind of quantitative thing that I used. But, you know, it was what it was at that time. One final point. Duncan was instrumental with Don Browning in setting up the International Academy of Practical Theology and the first meeting took place in Princeton in 1993 and I was fortunate to go to the first two or three meetings. It seemed to me there were two dominant groups in that conversation. One was a group of I shall call them theoretical practical theologians who would much rather have been systematic theologians who didn't really know very much about practice. The other group was a group of, well, they called themselves empirical theologians, but they didn't know very much about theology. Fortunately, when I have Heather and Elaine, have a, had a dominant influence in the academy admission years, and I'm, from what I hear, they are really beginning to establish practical theology as a discipline in its own right, which truly engages the conversation between theology and practice. And I think the, f the future of practical theology will never end, basically because the dialogue, the conversation, the interaction between theology, whatever we mean by theology, and practice, whatever we mean by practice, will never end as long as the judge is preaching the gospel. Thank you.